No, I interviewed an actress uh, who was doing a play down in Florida, mm -hmm. and in the middle of the play, someone walked up to the front of the stage and started yelling, saying, we can't hear you, speak louder. <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of that unusual... That is brutal. <laughs> well, what kind of unusual you know, Russians have you had doing that? That happened to me, but it was my mom. So, uh, <laughs> no, um, what kind of interruptions have taken place on stage? Well, there was... Okay, there was one play actually I was that I had directed in with my com Looking Glass Theater Company of Chicago, shameless plug, um, that I, was Upton Sinclair's book, The Jungle, that I had adapted, and it's uh, at some it, it, at some point it's definitely a political polemic, uh, and uh, in this one part, this woman was just really vocally um, against what the political message, and she was like, oh. Un unbelievable, oh, you know, and the actor is literally two feet away from her, and he's like, you know, doing this real passionate speech about, you know, communism or socialism. Uh, it was socialism, um, and um, it was it was just everyone on stage. And as the director, I was in back going, I'm gonna kill you, you know. <laughs> so it was astounding. But that's the great thing about, I'm going to interrupt you, uh, one question for 20 minutes. Um, that was the great thing about doing live theater, is you have that interaction with an audience, and that's what I love. So, yeah. You have something in common with Nicolas Cage, in that you both attended Beverly, Beverly High. Hills. Yeah, yeah. Now, actually, I have more than that in common with Nicolas Cage. We were in a play together, he probably won't remember. Um, well, he, he'll remember the play, but not me. He was a senior, I was a freshman, and I was in the chorus of West Side Story when he was you know, singing and stuff, so. I'm wondering, uh, besides the fact that you and I in the high school may have been different, uh, I think we both didn't evolve into the sex symbol personas until after high school, but in high school, uh, <laughs> how did you enjoy those years? Um, I enjoyed them as much as, you know, someone who couldn't get a date could. Um, no, I actually had a girlfriend, my first girlfriend in high school, really my, la my senior year. Um, and we were close friends before that. <clears throat> um, I, I had a great time in high school the last two years. The first two years were problematic socially for me. I didn't have a very good perception of myself and didn't feel, I mean, yeah, I didn't like really grow. Everyone else was growing and all the guys and girls are, you know, and, and I was not. Um, so I really didn't have uh, hip that growth spurt until like right before college. I went to college, I had skipped a year somewhere, so I was 17 when I went to college and yeah. Uh, have you gone so. back to any of your high school reunions at all? Yeah, I went back to my 10 year reunion mm -hmm. uh, last October. And how did that go? Or a year ago, October. Um, it was interesting. I actually went with uh, Johnny Silverman, who's the lead on The Single okay. Guy, and uh, this another friend, Carolyn. And uh, the three of us went together, and we said, "We're none of us. Are, we're not going unless we all go as a group." Uh, it was it was slightly terrifying, um, but at the same time, I was really glad I went because I saw m my very first girlfriend that I hadn't seen in years, and it was really nice. It was almost like, in a way, closure on that chapter. You know what I mean? Finally, because you leave high school and you don't know that you're not going to see these people again. You know, and you're gonna like be a whole different person 10 years later. So I went for that reason to kind of, you know. Was it unnerving for you because of the fame that uh, you know, you'd achieved? No, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad at all. And, um, and also the show wasn't that, you know, it hadn't really taken off as much at that time, so. There's a great scene <laughs> in, the, in the film when you're in the job interview, and it made me think of auditions. Uh, what have been some of the worst auditions that you've ever had to endure? I, I have one single worst audition, and I can't, I don't know if I should even go into it, but it was my first network testing for a pilot, and uh, a very, very serious one-hour drama that's still on the air, and um, did not get the part, but I, you know, I really acted my guts out for really serious scenes, and realized right when afterwards I was like still sweating, and it was like a huge experience. I uh, went into the bathroom and looked down and realized that my fly was open. <laughs> and uh, to this day, I don't know if anyone noticed or not, but I was like moving around a lot, crouching, sitting, you know, so I have to assume that um, the smirks in the front row were for some other reason. And, uh, 
humiliated, just devastating. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was not to be believed. So. Do you ever have women throwing themselves shamelessly at you and... Uh, yeah, there's seven women right over there that are way... No, I mean... <laughs> no. Uh, no, that's very strange. Not, I mean, yeah, I, I, I've been hit on. I mean, I've been, you know, slipped numbers and stuff like that. But, you know, you got to wonder why. Uh, how how you know, amusing is that for you when that happens? Uh, it's, sometimes it's amusing and sometimes it's deeply disturbing. Uh, because, I mean, it's, it seems really sad to me um, at, on some level. Um, I don't know, it's, it's, some, it's kind of the same thing. I don't know if you've ever been to, like, um, you know, a, 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 a dance club or whatever where women take off their clothes. And I, I've read about them. Oh, you've read? All right, all right yeah, me too. <laughs> but I've heard that in those uh, environments that it, it can be really depressing, too, <laughs> because, uh, yeah, the same kind of thing. You know, there's a great uh, story when they were making The Godfather is when uh, the whole cast got together for the first time, how Al Pacino was so uh, awestruck by Marlon Brando, he reacted by just acting super cool. Uh, you know, working with Harrison Ford, I mean, what was your, your first reaction? And My first, well, I was just completely excited. I, I mean, I was just awestruck. I mean, here's a guy that I've grown up with watching, uh, my hero in some of my all-time favorite movies. Um, Witness being one of them, and uh, Blade Runner, you know, well you know the movies, but I, I was just, I was pretty dumbfounded, and um, I, I just gave him, I, I just knew the last thing, I assumed the last thing he wanted was like another lackey, especially if he, it was someone he was going to be working with, you know what I mean, so I just pretty much kept my distance, I was nice, and let him, you know, initiate any kind of, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he's got, I'm sure he's got millions of people just all over him all the time. So I just, I just wanted him to know right away that I wasn't going to be that guy. And I just wanted to work with him. So.